This is Tim from HiGraph. And as you can see, I come to you fully branded today, but it's a HiGraph video, so we can make this work, right? So in our last video, we looked at to how to add any REST source into HiGraph. So we added dev.2 blog posts as a remote source into HiGraph, and you can then query it either from a content schema in the CMS, or you could just query the GraphQL globally and get all your dev.2 data through HiGraph. Well, in this video, I want to actually show you how you actually query it, put it in the code and get it on the screen. And so I'm using Nux3 for this example because it's my personal website, but don't worry. If you don't use Nux, but you use Nax or Astro or anything else, there will be other videos in this series that show off different frameworks. All right, let's go into the browser so we can have a look at what we are working with today. So as you can see here, I have my query already set up and it's looking at my username, how many items I want per page, and then also a collection ID. That's something that dev.2 has. You can make different collections that are series. And in this case, these are just my work blog posts. And for these items, I get a whole bunch of things back. We saw this in our previous video. So actually have a link in the description or one of the cards up here to watch that video. So now that we know that this exists, let's actually have a look at our code. And so this is an out of the box Nux3 setup with a few modules added. So there's nothing super fancy going on. What we need to especially look at is this. So this is the Nux GraphQL client. Let me just zoom that in for you, uh, like this. And um, this does a whole bunch of lovely code generation magic, TypeScript magic. There's not that much you have to now add yourself for GraphQL to just work out of the box. This is really an excellent module. And so the way it works, I don't have any options here, as you can see. So I just have an environment variable to my GraphQL host, which goes to my high graph fast performance endpoint. And other than that, what you can do is you can actually make a queries folder. And inside queries here, I have articles.graphql. And this is kind of all you need for this module that when you start running Nux, it looks at this, it does introspection of your endpoint of high graph, and it makes functions for you, code gen, TypeScript, lots of fun stuff. And so as you can see, this is a very similar query to the one we just saw on the browser, right? So we have the username per page, collection ID. Here there are variables, of course, and then whatever we want to get back. And this is the beauty. When I now hit start and run Nux, which is currently is doing, you can actually go into the Nux folder and you see there's this GraphQL folder here now. And so inside, it actually created a bunch of types, right? The articles query, the articles query variables, our username per page and collection ID. And then when you actually look here, it actually made a module for Nux that exports my functions, GraphQL articles. When I fire this function with the right parameters, it will do the query for me and there's nothing else for me to do. This is just awesome and magical. So um, let's go to the articles page here. And so I've started by doing something relatively basic. So this is not the cleanest code, we'll get there in a sec. This is just to show you how you could do it. And so from that GraphQL module that we just saw, we can just grab our variables types and then make some options. All right, so these are the query variables we want to query with and then you have your GraphQL articles function that completely understands what it needs to get and it just returns whatever we need. So this is the lovely thing about Nux and modules that the complicated stuff is kind of abstracted away and you as a developer can just run with it. But it's open enough that if you want to break this open you can. However for this video we won't because this is just so simple and it works so incredibly well. So we have our articles that come back from this article collection articles, right? So article collection articles, and then we have all our stuff. And so I just made a little um, list here. And this list is just using some tailwind to make that work. And so we loop with the LI of the list item over the articles that we got. And then we check, do I have the title? Well, let's render a title. Do I have the link? Well, let's render the link. And so there's a few things here um, that you would do normally in Fuji.js to make this work. And so let's have a look at what that looks like. Go back to the browser here. And then this is what we just got. And of course that link going to my dev.2 article. And you can see here on work 
collection. These are the 18 boosts I have in my war collection. And that's what this is showing us now, other than that it's only showing 10 because that's what I asked for. All right, so this is what we have now. So this is relatively simple. You don't have to do that much magic other than just querying it and firing this function. And this does all your Nux 3 caching with use async data and all the fun stuff. You don't need to do that much here. It just works. So let's see how it can actually look slightly cleaner. So let's remove this one. Because I did a few things on my own side to make this easier to work with. So I made a component called articles list. And let's, re well, when you refresh now, you see it's a little bit more rich. It has a few more things. Because that's what I wanted. I wanted the date and this design. And there's like work articles and the see all link will actually go to this dev top too. And so let's have a look at what this articles list actually does. I'll go to components, articles lists. So it has a bunch of props, right? Because I might want to show how many page do I want in this list? Do I need a title for the list? Do I need to show more? Like there's a whole bunch of things that are just normal few related things. However, the props for username and per page and collection ID coming in, you can see those here per page, username, collection ID in this type, it's 20 as you can see. And then what I've done is I made another composable myself um, that makes this thing a little bit cleaner to look at, right? I want to get articles and, you know, give me the articles query with the options I'm giving it now. And there's nothing else I do here. And the rest is just, you know, rendering the list. And I have an article card in that card itself renders some stuff with a date that makes it more fancy. And just, it does, you know, um, lazy loading images. This is just relatively simple HTML here. But where the magic is, is actually this one. Uh, where were we? Not article card, but in the article list, we have this extra composable. So let's have a look at that. So I have a use GraphQL query composable. And in this one, I know all the queries I have because I literally wrote them here in this folder, right? And I get all the types for the variables. And this thing can get page, talks, videos, and articles. And it has a bunch of different property types as well. And so I kind of just wrap this in a super simple if. And so if it's articles, do this, you know, query articles with the proper variables and get the stuff back that I send into it. But the lovely thing is here, I just make a data prop that kind of traverses into the array. So I don't have to do that in the front end of my code. So all the, you know, the smartness of how you query things just happens here. So if I were to write unit tests, which I likely will, I have to do that here. That's it. And then so my articles list is super simple. I just add some props to this thing and run with it. So this is the Nuxt way, or th there's a few ways, of course, in Nuxt, but this is such a simple and elegant way. Um, this is great, this way to, to call high graph, because when you have a look at that, like, there's articles, there's pages, there's a playlist for my YouTube videos, there's talks. All the information about what I query is here and then I have a few functions and ready to rock. So um, in the, the next few videos, we'll look into other frameworks to also do this. But this was one of the first ones because I'm super familiar with Nuxt and there you go. Anyways, that's what I wanted to show you today. And feel free to join us in our Slack community at slack.highgraph.com to talk about all this stuff and do not miss out on like new things we're pushing out and product updates and all of that stuff. Anyways, happy coding. Cheers.